<laughs> oh, it's been a night. It's been a week. Let me tell you what. Uh, hey, everybody. How's everybody doing? Hey. Over there. Yeah, mic Moses. check, mic check. One, two, one, two. It was Moses one, two, one, two. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Let's get some people in here. Oh, Hello, yeah. old hag. Bleasy Chuckles. Trump's next wife. How are you doing, my friend? Bleasy Cheeks. To you. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Wit 107. Oh, yeah. Adama. We can have it. There we go. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Everybody's got a wrench in here who has a channel. Use that wrench for what it's for and uh, drop your links to your channels so we can get that going. Don't be hitting each other over the damn head with the wrench. Hello, Miss Kate. How are you? How are you? Good evening, everyone. <clears throat> I hope everyone's having a lovely week so far. Petey Wheat Straw in the house. Yep. Fly on the wall. Yeah. Yep. Good bunch of people in here. Hope y'all are doing good today. Yes, it is a good bunch of people. We have a fantastic Grigas. group here. Minnie the Moocher in the house. Stephanie with the numbers in her name. J.M. Schrader. <laughs> Stephanie with the numbers you know, in her name. You know, I got to, uh, I, I hate to make a habit of this, but I do have to apologize for the last stream. Uh, there okay. was a, there was an accident that happened at the old hag rehab and a couple people lost their lives. Maybe we can take a moment oh, here. Oh, no. Okay, that's long enough. But uh, but Wilma, she did escape. <laughs> Wilma escaped with just a few burns, so she is out. Oh wow! She oh, made good, it out. Good. So, so good. I think she's on her good. way back to headquarters. Oh good. I was worried. Uh, you know, the things you hear about those places, and then yeah, well, we just don't seem to be doing too good with these advertisements. You know, I I don't know what it is. It's every damn one we get, something bad happens. It's not right. You know, there is a common denominator that seems to go along with most of these uh, sponsors we've had so far, Moses. What did they don't, don't pay us? Mention, well, yeah, besides that, besides that, um, I don't want to mention that common denominator because I believe they're in the chat and I don't necessarily oh, yeah. want them to uh, get upset with me. But anyway, we're, we're looking for some good sponsors. We do have an ad tonight that we're going to show later and fingers yeah crossed i don't see there's nothing there's nothing that can go wrong with this one tonight either so no this was no, this no, was no. permanent so it's, it's gonna be good it'll be all right yeah yeah so cool um all right everybody we've got uh, a few people in here oh izzy i'm sorry uh well hopefully we can have some fun tonight then take away your bad day i hope everything's all right and uh you're in my thoughts. You're always here. So I hope we can at least put a smile on your face for a little bit. Wacky Jackie, uh, Chief Pounder, Horse, Seth Squatch, Dag, Dag Bums in the house. Maddie Madanara. Everybody Maddie hit that Madanara. like button. That's right. Uh, if you got a wrench, drop your channel so everybody can sub to you. Uh, yes, to you. That's what we need is a tactical soap sponsorship. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if they got the stinkingest that, boy on YouTube that has one, why can't we? Exactly. Gee, that guy who writes songs about dirt, he sure does smell good. Well, that, that's yeah. an ad right there in and of itself. You know what I mean? I, <laughs> I, I change my shirt like every every three or four days. He goes a week hey, sometimes. Hey, and if anybody missed um, Moses's uh, Bogzilla song about our Lord and Master uh, King Cobra JFS. Oh my gosh. You all, it's my favorite Moses song ever. It was incredible. It, there's some Easter eggs in there y'all need to look for. And it was, oh my goodness. Oh, Sasquatch is here. He's got a pocket full of Tot Tot. Good. Got to share. Good. Spread them around. Yeah. Spread them around. Got to share around. them things. That's right. You That's end up right. falling asleep. That's right. Hey there, Dagburn. How you doing? 
Good that's to Dag see Bum. You. That's Dag Bum. Oh, Dag. Can't, okay. Yeah, Dag Burn is, is trademarked. It's trademarked. So oh, we, okay, we, can't, okay. we can't pay okay. those rights. I ain't paying nobody else. <laughs> All right. All there right, been folks, nothing well, going. There been nothing going on in the Dirty Verse, really, other than uh, Donald come out to to say that he is done. He's done with all this social media people all up in his right. business that he posts on the internet. Don't be talking about him no more. He, he gonna post his, his business on the internet. And, you know what it was? It's what happened was he he went live and somebody was pissed yep. off at a man that had red hair and a, and a, had a man butt. And he walked around that Walmart, and the Walmart was open. You could see customers and kids walking by, and he's going, you you faggot, you know, you going to grab that man bun so you can screw that man, and you motherfucker. And, I mean, he just cussed and left and right. It was sexual and cussing. And you see kids walking by in the Walmart. I'm like, oh, this ain't, this ain't going to go well. You know, this ain't going to be good. So he goes live the next night saying that somebody's trying to get his job. One of y'all haters done called his work again, trying to get his job, and he can't even pan around and show the job site no more. That's how bad the haters are. I guarantee you that somebody has went to the front desk and said, who's this nut walking around talking and cussing and being sexual on his phone, you know? Yeah. And I guarantee you that's what's happened with him. And ain't nobody calling oh, yeah. to get his damn painting job. And he's went from 80000 He's making $100,000 a year now, guys. He uh, got a twenty thousand dollar raise. Yep. Jeez. He got fired. He got oh. fired for drugs and got a twenty thousand dollar raise. So, <laughs> yeah, hell of a job. Uh, I meet too, old hag. If I saw Donald in a Walmart, I would. I I don't know. <laughs> I would look. I'd get one of those little those little scooter carts and just keep running into the back of him with it till he, till I just made him hit me in the mouth. You know what you I know, mean? The scary, Just, the scary you know, thing is he was he was driving one of those scissor lifts around in a in the electronic section showing the painting job that he's done, and then he gets off of it still just cussing and ranting all the way through the all the way outside, all the way through the doors and all the way through the store, just cussing this guy and I think he cussed the weakest link and everybody on it. I mean he was pissed off. He was, oh, that's uh, the one. Thank you, Canterbury. I appreciate we appreciate that. We got a super sticker there. Um, oh yeah. Uh, yeah, Donald, is that the one that was on Dirky Lies channel? Yep. Yep. She posted it up there. Well, uh, so I didn't get to, I haven't been able to watch that one yet. I've had a whole bunch of stuff going on, but, uh, we do have a little clip tonight that we're going to show that is, um, uh, what is it? It's going to be the one where he's quitting social media. Yeah, right. we're just going. On. Yeah, let's just watch a few. We'll watch a few minutes of it up until he says something real cringy, and then we can stop it because it's. Okay. Uh, I think I think I got this one on my channel. Okay. If you want to watch all, right, all of it, let's get that one going. And we're just gonna watch this now. You know, Donald has finally decided he's quitting YouTube. It's over with. Let's listen to it. What's up, Facebooks? Facebookers, Facebooky. I just, you know, I wanted to get on here, guys. Last night, I had some YouTubers come at me. I mean, they were talking some pretty foul stuff to me, man. And then when I sit and defend myself and, you know, give it back what they're giving me. It's starting to rain out here. Give it back what they're giving me, then they threaten to get my job taken away. It's like, man, you can't win for losing, you know? They know I got a family to take care of. And they... I swear it's like they can look at parts of my other, my family. They can look at like other people in my family and they think that I'm like that when I'm a hardworking man. I work every night of my life. I work every freaking night, uh, seven days a week sometimes, but I'm not, I'm just, I'm human. Ooh, damn. It's going to come down. It's coming down right now. Lightning. It's going to pour. But uh, I'm human just like anybody else is. I'm not going to sit and let people sit and talk smack to me. And I mean, they, it's not like they just started it. They've been doing it for years, guys, years. I mean, year, I mean, it has been at least a year. After a while, you get fed up with the bullshit. After a while, you get sick of hearing you're a heroin addict. You get sick of hearing you're on drugs. Or, I mean, it doesn't matter what it is. 
anything I do or post, it's, oh, he's a drug addict or he's a fucking this, he's that, he's, you know, uh, he don't like gays or, man, I got gays in my family. I mean, I, I, I don't, I, I'm going to stick up for myself. I'm not going to sit and let people push me and push me and push me and push me for a fucking year and not say nothing. Eventually, you're going to get pushed far enough and eventually you're going to say something. I don't care who you are on this planet. If you keep getting pushed and poked and pushed and poked, eventually you're going to say something. And last night, I fucking blew up on them. I just had enough of it. And now they're trying to get my job taken away from me for the second time. It's in my second job they're trying to get taken away from me. And it's like, man, you guys, they, it's, I'm just, I'm off social media. I got to leave social media. I can't do the, I can't do the social media shit, man. You got, there's too many. Now, who, who mm. wants to bet that that will absolutely not be the last time that we see Donald on social media? Oh, I mean, no. No. You know, he's, he's, he's got to get off of it. I could have Belize call him and he'd be on there and within before we ended the stream. <laughs> we could get the frog face motherfucker to make a comment. Oh yeah. God bless. If if, if Bleezy away. called him if Bleezy if Bleezy called him and said this is the frog face fucker, that'd be it. He'd blow up. Absolutely. He'd be pissed. Hint hint. Bleezy, you're in the chat, <laughs> aren't you? <laughs> we just might have to I and you know what? I don't know. Half of the shit, because I really, Donald bums me out. I can only watch certain, a little bit of him yeah. before he either enrages me so much, or he completely, <laughs> like, depresses me. Like, I just yeah. sit there and think, God bless. This you dude can, is uh, just. You can literally take, you take his video, like that one, and listen to, like, the, what we did, you know, it was two or three minutes of it. And then skip ahead 15 minutes, and he's saying the exact same thing over and over yes. and over. I'm 41, yes. guys. I look pretty good, don't I, guys? These son of bitches yeah. try to get me fired. He's been talking about getting him fired so long that he's done got fired, got a new job, and is talking about getting fired again. <laughs> yeah. For real. And yes. he's 180, he's 180 to 185 pounds. He's even done videos from the scale as he weighs itself. <laughs> he wants everybody to know just how easy it would be to knock him out. Yeah, exactly. It is dark as fuck watching him, Ken, Rachel. It's dark as fuck. It can be either just like he's so misogynistic and just such a uh, just, uh, you know, no no man hate here, but so alpha male-ish mm -hmm. and just at the same time so beta male-ish. It's so just, I don't know. It can get <laughs> Rachel me. knows. <laughs> Rachel knows for sure Rachel she knows. got she she yes. got a good five minute death threat. Yes, she sure <laughs> yeah. did. He went into terrible. detail how he was going to kill her. Yeah, <laughs> Just, uh, well, I can't and, believe you know, that his his boss would get mad over stuff like that though. Oh no, absolutely not. And if anybody, uh, I know Chevy got it. I'm not sure if you got it, Moses. I think uh, there was a couple more people. We all got um, sent a video on Facebook. I got it on Facebook Messenger of a cartel. Uh, disembodying someone uh, while they were still alive. Do you remember that, Chevy? Are you still oh, yeah. in here? Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's this this video he sent me through Facebook Messenger is so bad that YouTube actually gave me a um, permanent strike against because I tried to upload it as private. I didn't even <laughs> upload it as you know, like I was going to publish it. I just wanted proof in case it ever came out that he tried to send me. You know, this, it was crazy. Oh my gosh, please. It was awful. It was literally, it was like one of those videos that you have to be sent from the cartel. And he, he, uh, yeah. Cutting a dude's legs off, his arms off, then flaying him. And then after he sent the video, all of us, he put LOL. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. You're walking a line, Rick. You're walking a line. That's what he told us. <laughs> I think the, the the last good one I heard was when he said he was going to dress up as the. Well, first he was going to lay in the ditch, and he was going to figure out what time the mail came, and then he was going to get a mailman's outfit and come and deliver the package to you motherfuckers. 
<laughs> it was oh, incredible. Was awesome. Incredible. He, yeah. And now there's a there's a new guy. I don't know who it is, but he um, <laughs> Bob Smith. He did not send you two girls one cup. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but there is a guy that did a review of one of Donald's videos and he thinks Donald like knows who we are and that no Donald has uh, 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 is coming after. He doesn't know any of us. <laughs> no, uh, if he did, he would he forget. Know. Like uh, he knew he had he had a couple people's names and he couldn't remember them. Like five seconds later, you know, even with yeah, Bleasy yeah. on the line, he'd be like, Larry, is this Larry? And he'd be like, no, no, it's Leroy. <laughs> All right, Larry. <laughs> like, he couldn't keep up with that. He's <laughs> an idiot. He's such an idiot. Oh, but yeah, that's that's all that's gone on this week in the uh, whole Durkey thing. Durkey's in hiding. Somebody, uh, mm -hmm. Pharaoh said, did we see Gotcha Man's video trying to piss Durkey off and draw him out of hiding? I haven't seen it yet. Uh, yeah, they's, they's, I've seen a lot of them that do that, but and that and what I, I told somebody, I said, you know, poking at him and, and making fun of him and calling his house repeatedly and all that stuff, that might have worked. That might have shaken the bushes, might have got you a gobbler, but that ain't how you catch a squirrel. You got to lie in silence and wait. Yes. Yep. You have to think, he has to think that the, that the heat's off. He's got to think, all right, they... They ain't, they ain't on me. He gets on that YubaTuba and searches his name and sees that there's 86 new accounts putting up videos. He is not going to go live anytime soon. No. He, he's not <laughs> like that. He's, 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 a, he's a very timid little boy. You know, he is not like the gobbler where he would be out here like, oh, I'll get them all. I'll kill every one of them with this. You know, I'll fight them. I'll take them out of court. Uh -uh. Durkey's like, I'll, I'll lay back and wait and pick them one by one. You know, he, it took him a long time before he even would say any of our names and go at us, you know, personally. Right. But, uh, yeah. He is, he's not, he's not going to, he's not going to be called out like that, as you can say. You know, I, you call his house, you, you ain't going to get nothing, you're going to get nothing but that button hit. Send you straight to the police. Mama Bo, hit the button. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, I done hit that button. Me. I hit that button sixty three times yesterday, Dirk. We're going to change the number. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, yeah. Uh, you do have to snipe him. You do, and it's you know you'll you'll learn. Dirk, he's a very he's very different locale over here. He he doesn't go. You know, he waits until he feels he has the upper hand. And uh are you trying to make me say it? Are, are, are you trying to make me say it? He's retarded. They told us he's retarded. <laughs> he is retarded. <laughs> yes, says Squatch. I loved your Jesco leg, by the way. I wanted to I wanted to I was gonna say something about that, but uh yes, Izzy, you're exactly right. He will show back up, but he usually doesn't respond to the videos. No. He um yeah, he's not, you know, as a matter of fact, I think, I don't think Durkey really honestly watches most of our videos. I think that yeah. somebody um, will mention it to him and that's when he knows about our, our videos and what's going on, but he doesn't watch our videos. I don't think. No, my, my Jeopardy, my, my Jeopardy video was up like three months before he finally made a comment about it. And he thought it was new, yeah. you know. So he he, yeah. he 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 keeping up with too much, you know. Like you right. said, somebody will right. get hold of him. Maybe Donald or somebody will tell him, you know, something important, and he'll mention it. Yeah. But no, yeah. he didn't. He didn't. He don't pay attention that much. And like like I say, he was he's just a, he's like a squirrel now. That's what Bo called him was a little squirrel. Right. And, and to yeah, catch a squirrel to kill squirrel. a squirrel, you just gotta you just gotta lay there against a tree and wait for some bitch to come out. And he will right. believe me. He will. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> Yep. Uh, hey, David Hunt, how are you? Good to see you. David, uh, hey. Ya. One day he will come back out, yeah. Montauk, Adama, Izzy, Maddie, all these people coming over from uh, mob land. I'm not going to say that other MT word. Fuck that. Over from the mob oh, yeah. rats people. <laughs> uh, Izzy, you're exactly right. Old... Durkee oh, yeah. only watches clips that people send to him. And the reason he used to go, you know, somebody said the other day, why isn't he going live like he used to with Shay? I'll tell you exactly why. Is um, that it wasn't Dirky. It was Shay that wanted to go live all the time because 
She is, was, God rest her soul, she was a um, attention whore. And so she's the one that was always watching our videos and stuff. But yeah. yeah. Now, oh, yeah. Exactly she, was, right. she would come in, she would come into the chat a lot. Uh, yeah. Skanka would even, she'd come into the chat and uh, she'd go into the Discord and stuff when we have it. And, you know, she would try to fight back like the gobbler. She would go after every one of us, but not, and, you know, not Durkey. Durkey would, you know, you could tell he didn't want to do a lot of that. And then when she started going live by herself and talking about signing autographs, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Oh, and yeah, Bleezy, you're right. Donald does watch and reads the comments. Oh, um, yeah. I think Donald does a little YouTube search of himself every once in a while. Mm -hmm. You know, so, uh, Squez, you are exactly right. King Cobra is twice the outlaw Durkee and Donald are. 100%. Oh, yeah. I mean, Durkee would have done it. Durkee would be in a padded room if, if the trolls went after him like they did Cobra. I mean, they hell, Cobra's been yeah. swatted and all kinds of shit, you know. Oh, God. Yeah, he's had a grinder date sent to his door. Uh, daily. <laughs> daily, yeah. Yeah, he's had, uh, he has friends who come to his house and steal from him all the time. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah, he's, uh, <laughs> yeah, they would have, uh, yeah, Durkee and Donald would have absolutely been locked away by now if they had to deal with the stuff. Even, I mean, as much as I don't even really watch, but even Cyrax level of trolling, if we trolled uh, Durkee, the way Cyrax got trolled by the people who troll him, I mean, they'd be, uh, they would be just gone. We do, yeah. we do mild trolling of Durkee if he really wants to know the truth and, and of Donald, you know, yeah. uh, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. They couldn't handle uh, much more. I mean, we are, we are, it's the, we're the weakest trolls on the internet for sure, but yeah <laughs> but they can't handle it. they just can't they just can't take much more of it yeah yeah we're like troll light you know oh, come on guys I mean, they didn't graduate they didn't graduate they graduated middle school for god's sake so you know yeah and exactly i want to i want to point out in that video he made one more comment right right before the end he said <laughs> and all you people talking about me making fun of gays because he kept calling that redheaded guy gay you know and i guess they that's yeah. what has sparked somebody to go up to the counter and say something to it i guarantee it but he said, yeah. oh, you people talking about me talking about gays? He's like, I've got gays in my family. There's gays yeah. right now in, in Boone County right now in my family. So I, I don't know. Right. You know it's still the, 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 the pointing the arrow in his direction. That's right, because he can't even say it was about Brandon Poe because Brandon's not in West Virginia yep. right now. That's right. You know? And that's the only one that's ever been outed as being gay. Well, besides Turkey, of course. But yeah, I mean, he's yeah. absolutely talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, we are PG Red Solo Cup. We are very, very PG. And so yeah. when they start yelling all this shit about they're going to come after it, whatever, whatever. Because let me tell you what, let's pull a Music Biz Marty or a Boglum Chronicles on either one of these guys. And it's just, it's going to be hell will rain down on us. You know what I mean? Oh, it's yeah. going to be crazy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, more like PG thirteen. You're right, Chevy. It is PG thirteen. I wouldn't say necessarily PG. Yeah, you're right. Uh, what yeah, was your sometimes. name, Red Solo Cub? You changed your name again. Uh, yeah, this is PG thirteen. You remember that time that Durkee pulled his pants down in front of the in front of the camera, mooned everybody. <laughs> <laughs> he told the camera to kiss his ass and. He mooned everybody, and unfortunately, it didn't look like he had wiped that day, and it was very yes. disgusting. I'm sure the screenshots in one of our videos, but uh, he never done he never done that again. That's for sure. Yeah. Oh, it was so awful. Yeah, there are like, and that's the thing is that with Dirk and Donald, there are so many trollable, so much trollable content that is so much more than what or on the same uh plane as cyrax or um uh cobes or cool taste or any of them but with they just haven't been discovered yet but yeah or like yeah. the fingernails i don't know if you can see them in my avatar there the poop encrusted fingernails man it's just oh yeah it's crazy. oh man yeah and, and even like when Durkey did the whole uh 
If it smells like cologne, leave it alone. If it smells like fish, it's a dish. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and you wouldn't think you wouldn't think you could get no worse than that until Bleasy talked to Donald and he explained about uh, what he does. I ain't, gonna, I ain't gonna talk about that. Yeah, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> no. They they troll themselves more than anything. Yeah. You don't have to say it. Just let just give them the open mic. They'll they'll spill the beans. Right. I mean, that's where all these stories come from. We don't have to make up stories on these fools. Like you don't have right. to go in here and, and make up something that you don't know for sure happened. Just give them a little time. They'll do it. You know. Oh, absolutely. Dirk, you'll go in there. And he'll he'll let them fireworks off in his room eventually. He'll catch his bed on fire. Or something. <laughs> Don't don't have to go out here and, and make up nothing, you know, and guess. What did he say? So? He's gonna he drop a cigarette in his room, and it's just gonna do fireworks, or it's gonna explode everywhere. Yeah, Mama Bo's gonna come running out with her hair standing on top of her head. I thought it was a cigarette, it was a Roman candle. <laughs> oh my gosh! And uh, like the time that him and uh, Mama Bo both went live. Uh, he invited her as a guest on his live, so she was live on her account. He was live on his account, and they were literally sitting in the same room with each other. Yeah. All we do, all we do, is recap the retarded shit that they do on a regular basis. You know what I mean? It's not like we don't have to make nothing up, nothing up. A frog no. face motherfucker. I mean, the phone calls and voicemail messages that they leave. Oh. It's yeah. crazy. <laughs> oh, oh it is. Uh, uh, Izzy says that uh, Moses, I've shared your Cove song with people. It's so good. And I don't know if you saw, but Tuyo is going to put it in the subreddit. So Hell that yeah. subreddit something else. You yeah, know what share I mean? That thing. Yeah, share that thing. Yeah, subreddit on, on Coves is something else. Whoo. Uh, no, Chevy, Chevy, you couldn't make it up. You can't make it up. I've tried. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, when you do make something up, either it happens or a version of it happens eventually anyway, you know? Yeah. 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 <laughs> there should be a contest to get Mama Bo to be your mama for a day. Oh, God. Oh, God. You know, in <laughs> all in all honesty, um, uh, you know, my, my grandma was uh, country, country for mountain folk, and they are good moms. You know, most of them are. They cook good. They they raise children that don't belong to them. They, um, you know, they tend to be uh, very, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I can't even think of it. Anyway, they, they tend to take care of the people that they love and everything. However, most of them don't smoke crack and snort heroin with their son on live stream or dirty dance and hump their son's friends during a, uh, a version of ice ice baby on a YouTube video. Yeah. You know oh, what I man. mean? <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's, uh, uh, that's right. Drugs and just, hugs. That's right. Mandy, Mandy. <laughs> I wish Chigfoot should have got in on that action out there. He should have went out there and protected his, his territory when that, Boy was out there smacking on Mama Bo's ass. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? She came out there and just smacked the shit out of one of them boys. Uh, yeah. LBC. <laughs> Somebody asked on one of my videos the other day what LBC stands for. It's uh, <laughs> Lower Boone County. Isn't that what it is? Yep, that's it. Lower Boone that's County. That's it. Lower Boone County. Not Upper Boone County. Lower uh -huh. Boone County. Don't so get confused. Hillbilly, ISIS. Hillbilly Murder, Hillbilly Murder Records is out of LBC. LBC, that's right. <laughs> oh, when you think back on the stuff, oh, and then some of the shit, like the, uh, uh, does the bottle say do not snort? What's up, MRE? <laughs> <laughs> or when he fell out of his chair, still the most classic, wonderful, absolutely that's the pinnacle of Dirkyism when he on uh, Chevy's video when he falls out the chair. Uh, oh, they do yeah. it themselves. So yeah, yeah. so that's and just, then, uh, see what happened. Donald heard you say that one time. He said that's one of the most classic clicks clips is when uh, he fell out of his chair on live stream. You know, Dirky actually nodded out, and Donald's like, "Fuck oh. that! I'll do it six fucking times. Watch this, boys." <laughs> 
Yes. And, you know, and I'll do it better. I'll do it in public in a Walmart. Yeah. That's what it is. That is what, it, what is. it is. I That's bet you it is. Always trying to, always trying to one up each other. Yep. Yeah. You know, we've been going out of here for a half hour. I think it's time to go ahead and do it, run our ad. You know. Okay. All right. And I'm telling uh, you, this yeah, one cannot wanna, go wrong. You want to explain this one? This is, y'all, this is not, this actually has a, uh, just, it's not necessarily an ad. It's, we are sponsoring a billboard. Yeah. And um, this right now is currently, well. Is it showing up yet? Let's see. No, it ain't showing up. See, they they probably done took it okay. down. They might have taken it down. Yeah, they might have. Just give it one second here. I mean, uh, you know what? We've just been having a bad time with these advertisements anyways. Every damn one we have, it seems like something goes wrong. Yeah. Here, let me pull it back up real quick. Uh, right. I'll get it real quick for y'all. And uh, you want to explain this a little bit for them, Moses, while I pull it up well, here? He's in the he's in the chat right now. The guy who uh, actually paid for this one to go up, uh, okay. Sean Feldman. Sean Feldman yep. paid for this one, so and it'll be one of those permanent things that'll that'll be up. So uh, don't have to worry about you know any feds coming in taking it over or the PETA or the FAA or the right, FCC right, right. or nobody like that coming in. Right. So at least yeah. uh, I think yeah. If we can get it, we may there. yeah it may may not even post up. No, I tell you what, why, why we're doing that? Yep. While we're doing that, I could tell you a story. You work on that. Okay, won't you tell us a story while we get this going? You work on the advertisement, and get it pulled up because I okay. won't get paid for this one. I'm tired of not getting paid for these yes. damn advertisements yes. we're okay. pulling up. All right, I'm getting it there. I'll get it there. Go ahead. All we're right. going to listen been to talking some about story the, time with Moses. I've been talking about the road cones. All right. Now, you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the road cones. Like if you have it, there's the ad pulling up now. Y'all be looking at that while I'm telling you. But the road cones, when they go out to do a construction uh, on the road, you know, they put up a big line of cones. And you wouldn't believe how funny it is just to ride by them things and stick your arm out the window and knock them over one by one. Bop, 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 bop. You can do that. But now there's also other things right. you can do with them. You can, uh, and I have, I have done it with them uh, my younger years. If you take those cones and you stack them up, say you get uh, get about 10 of them, be good. There's a few things you can do. Number one, you can find a road, pick a, pick a street in town that has a good, you know, no side street off just and block it. Block the whole damn right. street. You put up four or five road cones on each lane and go up the other side, go up about a mile, put four or five more road cones so they can't come in either way. And the houses in right. between, <laughs> they usually take that road they're going to be so confused. So you want to get you a good spot to watch the confusion <laughs> ensue or, or better yet, just pull up to and stand there scratching your head like, what the hell? I can't get through. You know, the road's closed. You know, there's construction or something. And if you see one of those signs that says construction, put one of those suckers up too. Yeah. I don't really get them. Road construction, oh detour, God. you know, turn around. And, and cars will start. They will. They'll just start turning around. We go around. We just block <laughs> off roads for the hell of us to watch people get confused. Oh and some God, people get awful. mad. So then they go around the other side, you know, they, they come up the other street and, and it's blocked off too. And then they start realizing, what the fuck? I can't get to my house. You know, how I, can you get on this road? <laughs> so, you know, there's other things you can do with road cones. I, I don't know why, but it's just hilarious to get about, uh, say, four or five of them and set them up like bowling yeah. pins and just get your car and <laughs> mow them down. I don't know why that's funny, but it, it's just hilarious to do. You just set them up in the middle of the road and just roll right into them. Bop, 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 and just knock them down. And, uh, and there's a couple things to remember when you do this. When you when you do this, when you, once you've been once you've been road cone bowling, you need to uh, make sure you need to get out after you've got your strike or whatever, and you need to check underneath the car and in the wheel wells. Because one yeah. time I played around, I played around and uh, I won that round. I think, I think I got a perfect game and I came home and I was like, man, I smell, I smell smoke. You know, my whole front of my car is starting to smoke. You know, I've done overheated or something. There was a road cone that got stuck up in my wheel well and was melting and there was plastic stuck everywhere and the shit was on fire. And oh man, it was just dripping <laughs> orange stuff all over the place. But oh, it's, you uh, it, yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta look for those. Yeah. And I'll tell you and another Helen thing. Said, Go ahead. Helen Eller says, my luck, they'd be filled with concrete instead. 
I don't know. See, you got to knock. You got to make sure for that now. Same way with mailboxes. People try to load up mailboxes. We try to hit them with a baseball bat. You got to check them things before you do it. Yeah. But now them in cones, what you do, you, you once you get you some of them, you save them so you can play another round. You know, one day. But also, if you're going to have a party, it works perfect yeah. for parking. And it oh, keeps, it wow. makes, it makes everything look professional. The cops will actually ride by and be like, oh, they've got parking marked off and everything. No need to fuck with these underage teenagers, <laughs> you know, over here getting drunk as hell. And uh, another thing it's we used to do this. is uh, another thing we used to do to let everybody know that the party is there. Like if it's a bonfire or something and you got to park off the road, uh, go yeah. up to a Jeep or something like that, the shittiest car there and just flip it just softly turn it over on its side. And uh, put some road cones on top of it, and everybody be like, "Oh shit, there's been an accident." And they, nope, nope, it's a party. It's a fucking party, yeah. And uh, that'll that'll also get people's attention. So there's there's all kinds of things you can do with a road cone. Fun you know, you can turn them cones. into yeah, you can turn them into gravity bongs. You can do all kinds of shit oh, with yeah, them. They, yeah, And they just sit there. They just sit there for free. They just sit there for free out on the street for you to pick up at any time. <laughs> hey, and, uh, hey, you know what? There's been one in in the uh, gas station over by my house covering a pothole for months and it's been run over and flattened and everything else and nobody yeah. will move it. Nobody everybody just keeps yeah. knocking it around and stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. And now you, <laughs> you want to talk, talk about, about karma. Yeah, well, oh, go ahead. You know, talk about karma. One thing about these road cones. One of the karma of my road cones is all these people that I pissed off and, and probably construction people that I got mad for messing with these cones. About 25 years later, I met a guy who worked on construction for the interstate and they were working on a bridge and uh, they had to block off a half a mile before the bridge and a half a mile after the bridge as they yeah. was working on the lanes. And his job was they would once a week, somebody's job, they would switch. Uh, they'd have to be up there of the nighttime. And if any of the cones got knocked over, they had to set them up. And he yeah. said, the hardest part about this shit, he said, you know, is you constantly got to make the, it's a, a one mile on the, on the northbound lane and a mile on the southbound lane. And he's like, you know, I, they get knocked over every now and then. I get out and set them up. He said, but it gets so boring. He's like, I fall asleep. He's like, you want to come up here and make rounds with me, you know, just cruise the interstate and, <laughs> and set them up. So we would do that as we also got high. But uh, <laughs> my <laughs> somebody come along while I was up there getting high. We're parked off on the side, and he's got the orange lights going on top of the truck, you know, and the, his work vest and helmet on, and I'm over here just smoking a blunt like it's nothing. And somebody come along with their hand out the window on the interstate now. The speed limit was 55, and they was knocking over the cones, every one of them down through there. They knocked over. He had something <laughs> like 60 on one side and 60 on the other, and he had to, had to watch him set it all up. <laughs> <laughs> but that was his job and you know sometimes trucks and stuff would come along and hit those cones and it would carry them like maybe two or three miles down the road and yeah. knock them over into the median they'd hit these things you'd find them like so far away like you wonder how the hell these people done it and uh there's crazy shit you could see on the interstate just sitting there and it was working on a bridge <laughs> and on that bridge you would sit on that bridge and the bridge, it wasn't very long, but still it has so much give in it. Like these trucks would come along and you would bounce like you was on a trampoline sitting on this bridge. It was, it was weird. But that's uh, that's my story about road cones. You, you can do some crazy shit with road cones. It gets you in trouble. Road cone. Road cone fun. Um, all right. you want to Let's get uh, talking about our uh, advertisement here, Moses. Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate Sean Feldman giving us a little bit of a scatterole. Uh, for yeah, uh, advertising his Esquire service for being a lawyer here. This guy specializes in defamation, uh, Section 230, name calling. And if you see, he even had wow. a client before he died. Uh, Ernest P. Worrell was a client. Yeah. And apparently somebody somebody stole his catchphrase and uh, Sean Feldman got wow. him paid for it. Uh, you, you remember what his catchphrase was? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? You know what I mean, You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Yeah. I think I know yeah. who that was. I know who I know I who he sued. Yeah. yeah. You know, well, you all make sure that... We can't, uh, we can't say for legal purposes, though. Can't say right. who it was. Y'all make sure that you all call one five 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 four trumu if you need yeah. uh, Sean Feldman Esquire services. And, yeah, and uh, see, and there's... Uh, it looks like somebody climbing on it there at the bottom, but there's nothing that can go wrong with none of this stuff. I mean, right, it's just no. a wonderful ad. It's a wonderful ad yep. that we can't, uh, you ain't gonna mess that one up. Yeah, let's see. Yeah. Wilma try to screw that thing up, it'll be up for at least at least a month, I think, is what he paid for. Yeah, so well, good. Yeah, you know. that's good. That's good. All right, cool. 
All right, thank you, Sean Feldman. We appreciate your um, uh, your support. Appreciate and, your money. Uh, that's, that's what we appreciate. Well, we appreciate that, Scott. Oh, you can make it out to Moses Hayes. I see go. the weakest link is in the chat. You are the yes. weakest link. Hello. Yep. Uh, Sasquatch, you have a good one too, buddy. You have a good one too. Hey, y'all, make care, sure y'all go uh, sub to uh, Seth Squatch. Seth, I'm giving you a wrench real quick so that you can drop your channel. He's got a, he goes live. He's got some funny videos. Make sure you all sub to everybody in here that's got a wrench and drops their uh, channels. Everybody's really funny. We finally got, ble or we didn't, Bleezy finally got himself up over that 500 mark. Congratulations, yeah. Bleezy. Yep. Woo! Now we need to get into a thousand. That's right. Little Sasquatch had a video up uh, that he had Jesco's leg, and so he could actually yes. kick Dirk. He could kick Dirk's ass with Jesco's leg, and everybody would win. <laughs> yes, yeah, that was a that was a good one. And actually, uh, Seth is going to go live Saturday night. I Saturday evening, I believe, around five thirty or so. So everybody, drop in there. He usually drops a link if anybody wants to join, and it's a lot of fun. I sat in and listened to his last one, and. Uh, he's a funny guy. He's got some funny people on there, and it's a lot of fun. So y'all, y'all check it out. Um, that says yeah. Squatch with a with a Seth and a Squatch. So anyway, right. uh, you want to tell us uh, while we're on the subject of uh, road cones and everything, we thought tonight mm -hmm. we would kind of just shoot the shit with y'all. And um, we have uh, Moses has been like, I know he said something last week about he just has little notes of stuff where he. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, thinks of something, some story, and I love listening to uh, Moses' stories. And Moses could read the phone book to me, and I think it was funny. So I thought maybe we'd let you know, listen to some more of his little tales he has to tell us tonight. So, Moses, what was the next thing on your list? Uh, let's see, I did that road cones that was on there, you know, so I marked road cones off. Let's see what else I got up. Uh, we can talk about uh, earplugs. I've got earplugs wrote down here. Let's do that. Let's do that. All right. So, you know, now, this will be a way. And this will be, don't y'all be stealing my damn ideas now. I'm going out and making money either now. I'm tired of being bit on now. I'm tired of y'all biting <laughs> haters out there. But there's a way you can make some money, especially if you live, uh, if you live near a, a NASCAR track. I happen to live in, in an area where I could get to about three of uh, three or four of the, of the big NASCAR tracks within an hour or two hours. And uh, growing up, I went to tons of races and uh, held uh, uh, Rusty Wallace's first win was in like 84, 85. I was at that race and I've met all these guys. You used to be able to just walk into the pits and meet them after the race. The race would be over and they just open up the gates. You could go down and, and hang out with Dale Earnhardt, and Bill Elliott and Terry Labonte and these people, you know. But uh, yeah, what I used to do is uh, I had a couple of uncles who, who worked at a factory as most people do in this area. And uh, yep. at the factory, they give them all earplugs, you know, to uh, to go in, you know, to save their hearing because the machines and stuff are so loud. And he would come home every day with a couple of extra packs and just throw them in a bowl. And, you know, we would use them when we went to the races and stuff like that. And he would load up some. So one time we went to the race and he had like 10 or 15 extra packs that he would give out to the people sitting around us. And, save them money from having to buy them or whatever. So he has some extra left over and we was waiting. It was in between uh, qualifying or something. So I decided to take those and go out and sell them. You know, I said, well, hell I'll go ahead and sell these things for like a dollar a piece. I sold them in about 30 seconds. It didn't take no time for these things to go out of my hands. You know, and I was just a kid, 12, yeah. 10, 11, 12, something like that when I started doing this. So uh, for the next few years, <laughs> I started having him save up earplugs. And uh, I would uh, got so far, I had uh, maybe five or 600 pair and I would sell them for a donation. So I would say it's a donation. Some people give uh -huh. you a dollar. Some people give you five, you know, but uh, yeah, what I eventually did, I went to, uh, I went to Martinsville one time and I had my little sign and I had uh, like Moses heaps hearing service, you know, a little cardboard sign. I just carried them around in a, in a damn Tupperware bowl and my pockets overflowing with ones and, yeah, and, uh, I was and I would go and I would set up in between where they sell souvenirs at at the trucks and they sell right. shirts and shit there and just mooching as much money as they can off people. 
and uh, they were their earplugs was five dollars a piece they'd sell them for so i would just set up right in the oh, middle wow. of the town you know i'd set up right in the middle of their little circle that they had set up and i'd sell mine for a donation so people come along give me a dollar two dollars and i'd save them all kinds of money well one time uh, a guy comes up and he's like you selling these for a dollar i said yeah a dollar will do and he's like all right and he pulls out a fucking badge and it was a fucking i've been busted it was a fucking state cop <laughs> he was on a bicycle and I'm like, oh, on shit, you know, <laughs> yeah, he was on a bicycle. And I was like, you ain't no cop. And he pulls out this badge and here comes his buddy with a little walkie talkie. And I'll be damned if they wasn't. They really was cops. Oh, and, my God. Uh, he, <laughs> he explained how Ill, he explained how illegal it was for me to be doing what I was doing. And he actually let me keep my money. Wow. He didn't say he didn't say anything about my money. And he did take off on my bowl of, uh, of earplugs. I probably still had 50 or 60 pair left. And now another thing I forgot to mention was when I would do this, I would usually be high as a bat, uh, you know, because most of these race fans are drunk and, you know, you don't want to be sober around a bunch of drunks stumbling around right, drunk as hell. So right. I just get, I just get high as a bat because I'd have to drive home too. I didn't even go into most of the races at this point. Jeff. This is when I was like a, a teenager, you know, I was over yeah. the NASCAR shit, you know, once, once the, the commercials and ads start taking over, I was like, ah, fuck it, you know. Jeff right. Gordon and all this shit. I'm out. So uh, <laughs> they uh, they busted me, and but they didn't they didn't write me no ticket or anything. He explained how I could buy a peddler's license and this and that. But the moral to that story is, you always got to have a, somebody to hold the stash. Have just like he's on the corner now. Somebody hold the stash, <laughs> and somebody else hold the money. And you can oh, make a ton yeah. of money off these off these races. And uh, now you you would think drag strip. If you go to a drag strip, it's so loud with those funny cars that uh, you, they're your eyeballs shake. It's like, brrr, but you can just put your fingers in ears. Cause it's only like, it's only like five seconds of that. You know, it's nothing. You just close your ears and that's it. And at the NASCAR yeah. races, it's so fucking loud. You can't hear somebody screaming beside you, especially at like, uh, at like Bristol or Martinsville, where it's a real small track. And you go to like Talladega and it's kind of like, <laughs> and they go away from, you know, it's two mile track. You see, I'm just like it. But, but these little ones, Oh man, it's so fucking loud. Like I see, I see kids who would go and they wouldn't realize how loud it was, you know, watching on TV and you'd have to give them earplugs. Cause I mean, it, right. it would fuck you. It would fuck you. I'm sure my hearing has something to do with going to a hundred NASCAR races, a few hundred concerts, uh, all before, right. you know, the time I was 35, but that's, uh, you know, that's, that's something yeah. you can do with the, with some earplugs, yeah, just sure make sure you, uh, make sure you run it. Just make sure you run it like a uh, like the corner street, like the corner boys do. The corner boys. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hey Moses, I'm getting some. Um, uh, hold on a minute. I've got something. Oh hell. Uh, a little news thing coming across my. Uh, something's going go. on with. Oh my God! Something's going on with the. Um, with the billboard, it looks like what? Oh God! Uh, oh my what the God! What's going on with it now? The billboard oh, is no. caught on fire. Hell no! The billboard has caught on fire. Oh my hell God. no! <laughs> How long did you have right. that thing up there for? That didn't even last oh, twenty minutes. What the hell is that right there in the middle? Yeah. Hold on. Let me see if I can't. Hold on. Zoom in on that shit. On that. Zoom in on it. What the yeah, hell? Let me see if I can't do this that. This ain't right. Huh. I'm telling you what, man. Let me get. Let me open up my editing thing here and see if I can't get in a little bit closer Zoom on that son of a bitch there. I don't know what's going on, Bleezy Chuckles. Don't I done, I done cash the check. Uh, yeah, don't, yeah. Don't be trying to be, to be turning no damn holes on that. Yeah, Bleezy. What the hell? That's old <laughs> hag. What? Hag? Old Hag has done burned the damn sign down. What's wrong with you, That Hag? shit ain't cool. Hey, they did tag WMETH right there in the middle of that pole. Though. Look at that. <laughs> hey, I appreciate yeah. that. Thank you. No problem. Hey, well, did you cash the check yet? Hell yeah, it's gone. Okay. Yeah, we, right. got, we got paid on that, but yeah, <laughs> thanks a lot there, Old Hag. We could have got paid for a month on that. This ain't... All right. Damn uh, it, oh, Hag. Another ad down the drain, thanks to you this time, Old Hag. Oh. Oh damn! I'm telling you what, she's gonna be the she's gonna be the downfall. Of WMETH before it's all over with. Yeah. God. 
But I do appreciate you tagging that WMKH one zero point zero live out of Boone County all the time on Moses Heaps channel. <laughs> Wheezy said hiding behind pictures of an old woman. Yep. Poor Donald. Oh, Donald. <laughs> yeah. Oh well, no wonder she's not in the chat anymore. Now she saw. Yeah. Well, she ain't in the chat no more. That figure she yeah. gone. Yeah. 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 She's well, jealous of the lawyer's success. She sure is. She's jealous of all kinds. She just because she had the 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 animal business, you know, the exotic animals, and it got busted, you know. Yeah. And then she had yeah. the rehab, you know, and then she had the firework stand, and it got busted. Yeah. It got raided, you know. She had the yeah. sex shop going on on the other side of the fireworks store. I mean, I thought Blazy at least would at least get in. There she is. There she is. She ain't hey, jealous of nothing. What are you doing? What are you doing mm -hmm. here? We see. Yeah. We saw the proof. The firebug. The proof there. Arson investigator is going to be on this one. Yeah, we you can't hide from this one. I use my uh, my editing software. I got right in on there. Uh, there we go. Look at that. Yeah. Tag. What is wrong? With right me? there. Your proof's in the pudding. Proof's in the pudding. There it is. And there's the pudding. That's right. We don't make up stories here. We got the proof. We got your eyes standing on top of it. <laughs> she said her ventures will succeed. We'll all see. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. Man. We've been going we've been going out of here for we've been going out of here for fifty one minutes. I believe I can tell us one more story before we get to that hour. Let's mark. do it. Let's do it. I don't like boring people for over an hour. That's all there is to it. Unless it's right. unless it's real juicy. Unless unless somebody comes in here and you know, maybe Dirk, will come in here and decide he wants to go live with us. Oh, that then would be I, awesome, wouldn't it? Yeah. Or if Don oh, or his wife, you know, any any of those people want to come on in, just, I'll drop the link anytime. I don't know how, but I'll tell Rick to do it. <laughs> All right. You know? what, hey, what, what story are you going to tell? Are you going to tell the uh, Pillsbury Doughboy one? <laughs> yeah, I can tell that one. Yeah, I'll tell okay. that one since it, it kind of plays off of the – the NASCAR one too, because uh, like I said, I, where I'm at, I can get to a bunch of different tracks: uh, Martinsville, Bristol, uh, Wilkesboro. When they had North Wilkesboro, uh, Charlotte's not too far away. Uh, there's a few Richmond, and uh, but yeah, when I was doing the uh, last week, I was talking about uh, Trevor Moore, and we do the comedy stuff. I was. Uh, at one of the competitions and one of the guys from uh, from where I was at saw me and asked me if I would uh, mind working with him, working for him, I guess. Yeah. Uh, he worked with Pillsbury and Heinz 57 as a sponsor. Right. And uh, this at this time, the very first this I was only I was just old enough to drive. I was 16 years old or something. And uh, I, I hadn't had no job or anything like that. You know, he said it paid 20, 25 dollars an hour. I think is what it paid. Yeah, 20 or 25 and i didn't know what it entailed it had something to do with advertising that was going to be at one of the pit parties so i went to this pit party right. and uh, he, i was advertising for pillsbury when i got there they had me dress up in this suit and the way you got into this suit was he had a backpack that had like a fan on the back of it with a like a lawnmower engine or something like a weed eater engine and uh, uh -huh. i would get inside of this uh, this thick pleather leather thick suit and zip it up somebody would zip it up for me and then i'd start yeah. that little motor and it would start puffing up the suit and uh it was the, the pillsbury doughboy and he was about nine foot tall and pillsbury about doughboy. <laughs> yeah he was about uh i'd say about three or four feet wide he was wow. uh, yeah he was real big he had a light on him so he uh he glowed you know in the nighttime oh my and they said, you know, all you got to do is uh, these girls will walk around with you and hand out coupons or sometimes they'd have cookies and shit like that to hand out. And all you got to do is just stand around and take pictures, you know, just walk around. And I'm like, oh, OK, yeah. you know. So kids start coming up and hitting me in the stomach, you know. But, of course, they wasn't reaching me. It was just punching the, the, the suit in the stomach. And right. I started going, hoo hoo, hoo, -hoo. Well, that just that <laughs> set them all off. They like whoever had done this job before needed these girls yeah. to like hold their hand and lead them around like they thought that i was like no nah, i can i can dance around like i don't need y'all to lead me around y'all just hand out the coupons you know right so i'm doing little dances and i'm hoo -hoo all day long you know <laughs> and uh 
eventually uh, I got the attention of the the local news and I ended up going up behind Dale Earnhardt uh, senior and I had an interview with him. He, he hit me in the stomach. He was driving Dale something Earnhardt to do with, senior with did. yeah, he was driving like an Oreos or some kind of shit car. Then I don't know what it was, but uh, yeah, yeah, I got my, uh, there's a video out there somewhere of the Pillsbury Doughboy oh, wow. and, and Dale Earnhardt on the news and him fucking with me. And I fuck with, I knocked his hat off you. his head. Oh, it's wow. me inside, of course. You never know, but it's me. <laughs> but That's uh, hilarious. I, I've done that quite a bit. We go to uh, like uh, company picnics or uh, done it at uh, Dollywood a couple times, races wow. all the time. Wherever, they, wherever Pillsbury could get their damn name branded at, they would call yeah. me and I would go do it. And uh, I like doing it stuff. A lot of times I would just, they'd suit me up, they'd have that suit there in a suitcase for me. And I just put it on at the car or whatever. But one time it was a real nice, uh, oh, it was some kind of convention. And they had a right. convention center and they had dressing rooms up for us. And here it was like Pillsbury, you know, with a sign point from, I'm like, oh, I'm feeling big, you know. So I already had the suit on when I got in there. And they're like, uh, all right, after an hour or so, you know, take a break, change your battery, you know, cool off. Because it get hot as fuck in there sometimes. So right. I went to the Pillsbury room. I take off my suit and I look around and over here's the. The Mr. Peanut and uh, the Chester Cheetah and, uh, you know, all these oh different, all these different, uh, low, all these brands, you know, the Hamburglar. And uh, yeah. I noticed that the Chester Cheetah took off her suit and she's wearing her bra and panties and she's looking good. And I look over here at Mr. Peanut and it's a little girl, too. You know, it's a, well, not a little girl, but she, you know, it's a woman, oh, too. Well, and, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they, they start. I'm like, wait a minute. I think I may be in the wrong. They're like, oh, we thought you was a woman. You know, you just all we heard you say was hoo hoo hoo. They're like, we we thought we got you in the wrong one. I'm like, oh, I don't know if you do or not. Oh you know, I could, I could, I can like this job I now. Can work it, yeah, I can work here. Yeah. But y'all, uh, they heard me say it was hoo hoo hoo. And they're like, oh yeah, we just figured you was a woman. What the hell? But you were among uh, mascot royalty there. Oh mascot yeah. Mascot land exactly to yo. Listen, I'm gonna, I'm going to task everyone in here with searching this week before Saturday, before we go live Saturday night, <laughs> searching Google and let's see if anybody can find that news clip of, uh, of Earnhardt senior and the Pillsbury yeah. Doughboy. <laughs> Maybe we'll yeah. make you a prize. It was, uh, I'll even help. It was in, it was in Bristol is where that was at. It was before Bristol. a, uh, a Bristol race. All I can't right. remember if it was the night race or the spring race. But, oh, that'll uh, be great. The day before, they have a big party where all the drivers get together and sign autographs, and they hand out so much free stuff. Like, yeah, you just leave with tons and tons of bags of stuff for these sponsors, just giving it out. And uh, they apparently got the money to give. They give them my dumb ass. Yeah, and they would they would always pay me for like ten hours or something. I wouldn't be there, but like two or three. But yeah, they'd always give me like two or three hundred dollars. Oh wow! It, and that was that was my first job. I liked that job. That, that's a, that's a pretty good little job. Uh, <laughs> it's no paint in Walmart's, but it's something. No, nope. you know. No, nope. but it got me eighty five thousand dollars a year. Take that, suckers! Eighty five thousand. <laughs> <laughs> that's my dirty math. Oh, oh, that's crazy. Oh, uh, let's see here. Let's let's read some of the chat. All right, fly. Take it walk. easy, fly on the wall. Thanks for showing up. Yep. Thanks for showing up. Uh, hey, Chance. Uh, yep. We, uh, Moses has been telling us some stories, and it's been uh, rather funny. What other stories you got, Moses? We got a couple more minutes. Okay. Let's see. I got another one wrote down here. I love Moses' stories, so I can listen to him tell him all night long. He cracks me up. Uh, I, I'm on the fence here between one. Uh, I've got, I got a horn. I used to have a horn under my car. Yeah, and I've got another one where I had a football game. I done some craziness. Um, let's do. Um, you wanna, okay, chat. Let's do. Yeah, if you want to hear about the horn, put a one in the chat. If you want to hear about craziness at a football game, put a two in the chat. Let's let them decide real quick, and then yeah, we'll. Uh, well, yeah, we'll make that the last little story for the night. So, if you want to hear about the horn on his car, put a one, and if you want to hear about some. Uh, Craziness at the football game, put a two. All right, we got twos coming in. Many wants to hear the 
horn. Do y'all want to hear the two? Looks like the twos are going to win. My God, 69. 69. <laughs> yeah, it looks like we're going to. All right, let's let's. let's All right, we'll let's go with the then. we'll go with the football. But I'll 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 tell the horn one another day. Uh, yeah, yeah. About yeah. Uh, my little trick horn I had set up, but it was it was pretty good. Uh, this one, the football game was uh, it was at uh, Virginia Tech. Uh, I was always a, a Virginia Tech fan, and I ended up going to Virginia Tech. But this was before they were big. This was before Michael Vick come along and and blew up the college. You know, they used to have uh, wooden bleachers in the end zones. And mm-hmm. you could go up there for like, I think tickets were like $5 and you could park like you parked where you could actually see your car from the stadium. Uh, I think Frank Beamer, the, the coach, it was like his second or third year up there. And I actually right. walked out onto the field before the game and like threw the ball around. Wow. And the thing, the cool thing about sitting in the end zone was if you sit on the top row, and I think it's maybe 10 rows, you could catch the extra point. It lined up perfectly. So the extra points would land at the top row. And uh, oh, wow. you catch the ball and throw it back to the guy down there with the little vest on or back onto the field or whatever. And uh, like I said, it's before Virginia Tech blew up. You know, it uh, it picked up around 98 when Michael Vick come along and made them a national team as they are today. But uh, and a lot of these players I met and I hung out with um, because, you know, I was, I was the same age. I was there around the same time as Vick. And I can just say that as far as Michael Vick, I know a lot of people hate that I even say his name. They're like, oh, that son of a bitch, you know, he, he killed right. dogs. You know? All I can yeah. say is if you're 19 years old and you all of a sudden come into two or $300 million as a teenager right. and yeah. your uncles and your family has supported your football career all the way to get you to this point, yeah. you cannot turn them. You can't say, no, I can't give you no money, Unc, you know, and right. what are you going to do with this money if I give it to you, Unc? What are you going to do with it? You know, right. ain't going to build no damn dog ring or you know i mean that's and yeah, another yeah, thing is he somebody for that stuff right no and you know a lot of his family got him in a lot of trouble and he done his time completely he didn't snitch on nobody and right. he's out he supports Pete and all that stuff now so I, you ain't gonna hear nothing bad about michael vick from me okay he done his time for right. shit that a lot of people got him into but this game was long before that this game was uh, just Stadium was crumbling. We just got a new coach who ended up being up there for about 30 years. And uh, the game was uh, it was between Pittsburgh and uh, Tech, I think, actually won. But in the middle of this game, uh, the, Shane Graham was the kicker up there. And uh, he went on to be a pro. And, uh, yeah. hell, I caught maybe five or six balls before the game and a couple in it. So here we are. It's in the middle of the game. It's like third or fourth quarter, and it's a close game. All right. The ref had right. made some bad the ref, refs have made some bad interference calls. The stadium was on his ass already. And uh, right. the lead official was getting some heat from the fans. And Tech comes down, they score to, to take the lead. So the fans are, you know, they're getting back into it and uh, starting of the fourth quarter. So he kicks the ball. They cause score the touchdown. They kick the extra point and I catch it. I catch that ball. And I'm like, oh, you wow. know, hell yeah, you know. So everybody's all going crazy, you know, throw it back, you know, throw it back. So I'm like, you know, I ain't just going to throw it back to the little man down here with the X on his chest. I'm going to throw it back through the uprights, you know? Right. So, yeah, so uh, I'm just going to throw it back onto the field. So I took that ball as hard as I could, and I threw it back through the uprights from where I was at. And it goes back through the uprights, and here comes the ref. And he's running across the field left to right. And I see it coming, and the ball's in the air. Everybody <laughs> sees it coming. It hits this referee. He couldn't have run more square into it, head first. It knocks his hat <laughs> off his head. It lands on the stadium. The whole stadium goes fucking just <laughs> louder than the touchdown. I had done attack the referee. He stands up and looks through the stands with his hands on his hips, like you motherfuckers. Like somebody, somebody has done attacked me, you know. And even if it was on ESPN. They're like, they're like, uh, apparently there's something happened here with the referees. I'm hitting the head with the ball. He's like, you're not supposed to do that, you know. And, but the people are all to there. I'm like, I'm like, oh my god, you know, I'm going, to, I'm going to jail, you know. They're looking out, and the people are. I'm trying to like kind of duck down a little bit. And people are like wanting to lift me up on their shoulders. They're running up. And I'm getting high fives, you know, and I'm on the top row, and the whole damn stadium staring down at me is what it felt like. You know, went freaking nuts when they, I mean, he hit that the point of the ball hit him right in the temple, and he held his head like it hurt him, you know, and uh, his hat went flying. Oh man. And I, I couldn't, have, I couldn't, have, I couldn't have threw it and hit a moving target to save my life that far out onto the field. And oh man, he was just. 
I hit him right in the head the, right after, oh, like, he had made some bad calls, too. Like, it was – couldn't have been time no no perfect. Oh, but they didn't, they didn't throw me out. They didn't come after me or anything. So, <laughs> no, that was good. But I, I still remember – oh, I remember my stomach fell out of my – I'm just like, oh, my God, you know, here we go. I'm going to jail. <laughs> perfect shot, though, man. Sounds like it was a oh, perfect yeah. shot. It was. I couldn't do it again if I tried. I know you couldn't <laughs> – Oh my God! Hey, look, how long is the uh, horn on your car story? Yeah, yeah, I'll go ahead and tell it. All right, I'll let's go ahead and tell it. it. Let's it ain't go, that let's long. Let's round out so, tonight with it. Okay. The car that I used to to do bowling with, <laughs> I think it was a '87 or '88 Nissan, and mm -hmm. uh, it was uh, not the best of cars, you know, not the newest of cars, anyways. But it right. it was it was nice for a for a high school kid, anyways. And I decided to suit mine up a little bit. Of course, you always get the tinted windows and the uh, the decals on the on the window, you know, along the top, you know, the the strip yeah. of tin along the top. And I decided I was going to put a, a special horn on mine. So I was looking for all I wanted was like a like a goofy horn to, to home. I'm looking on this right. little catalog, and for an extra couple of dollars, I got this little bull horn. And uh -huh. I had to go to a garage to get them to wire it up for me. It was like a Let's see. I might have a picture of it here for my avatar if I get it pulled up. Let's see. So I went to the I went to the garage and they hooked it up for me, and it run to a box that was inside uh, inside the car, and on the box it had animal noises that it would play. It would play like a chicken, a cow, uh, a dog. It would play gun noises, uh, like. Uh, yep. Do different noises like that. They also had sirens and like the woo, woo, yeah. woo, woo, woo. and I could change. I could change different sirens, you know. And yeah. uh, it had a microphone also. So if I, you know, most people bumped the music had you know a couple fifteens in the back. I could just turn right. on the damn PA. I could turn on the PA mic, set that up against my my speaker, and I held anything. I could turn on the radio and it'd be blasting. So a lot of times, what I would do is I would. Uh, I cruise through town with my my mic that turned on. I'd be like, "Hey, look over here! Hey, look over here!" They'd be like, people would be like looking around. They'd be looking around like, "Where the hell's this noise coming from?" You know, I'd be like, "You dropped yeah. your pocket! You dropped your pocket back here!" And these people start looking around the ground like, "What? I dropped I dropped a pocket? What are they looking for?" You know, so and uh, it was just funny. Like you go to Walmart and you go cruising yeah. along the front of Walmart. Somebody come out and you're like, "Mar!" I'd be like, "What? Did you hear a cow?" You know, did that, that horn, that cow, that car just move with me or, you know, and, oh, you know, it was all kinds of shit. One time I, I pulled up to uh, my buddy's house. It was just him and his dad and they was both in there getting drunk. And yeah. I, I backed up, I backed up to their door to where the lights was reflecting on their door. And I turned yeah. my siren on, I turned the siren on and I started hitting the brakes on the car and I turned on the emergency lights. So it looked like red lights were flashing out in the, in the driveway. <laughs> I said, come out with your hands up. We've got you for delinquency, contributing to the delinquency of minors. Come out. And they fucking, they ran, they ran out the back of the house, up the hill. They went, they ran for the hills. They threw a trash can out the door thinking that would slow the cops down. And they really thought they was getting busted. Not, we never even told them any better. They just thought that the cops come looking for them. And uh, but the the worst time though, <laughs> I got into trouble with this. Not with the cops. Somehow, somehow, I never. I've always avoided the cops. But yeah. uh, this this well, one time, taste, I, tell me. <laughs> this one time I was on a back road and doing what you do on back roads. And uh, I come up on this car and it was going slow. And I'm like, man, this car will not get out of the way. And they're like, pull it over. My friends are like, pull it over, pull it over. You know, make him pull over. <laughs> so I turn on the woo woo. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he does he pulls over you know and i just go around him didn't think nothing else about it you know yeah i've done this a million times i had this son of a bitch don't recognize me it's the problem of being in a small town they recognize right. me and they done told my folks and i got home and they're like so what was you doing out this road i'm like huh why the fuck they know where i was at <laughs> you know they're oh, like uh, yeah you didn't pull nobody over did you i'm like what no hell no not me you know no not me. No, they're like, they're like he's done called the cops. You're going to jail. You know, then they started fucking with me. Oh my but, God. But yeah, but yeah, I got busted that time. My parents done busted me. Did and, they take uh, the horn away from you? No, they never did take the horn. But uh, I, I definitely thought twice about pulling people over. Anymore. Pulling people over again? <laughs> yeah, but it was always good. You know, if you, if you come along to somebody, you know, acting stupid on the street or 
You can just pull yeah. up that PA and scream at them, you know, and tell them, you know, hey, hooker, what are you doing over there, you bitch? Yeah. You know, dropped your pocket. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dropped your pocket was bad. You tell somebody they dropped, you go to somebody and say, hey, you dropped your pocket and just point. They'll look for, yeah. they'll look for five or six yeah. minutes of yes. looking for their pocket. Especially if you say it real fast, you know, it's oh, kind of yeah. like that whole, uh, as Finkter says, what kind of shit, you know, but dropped your yeah. pocket's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when I was, uh, a rascal. when I was, when I was little, uh, well, you know, when camcorders, they called them the uh, video cameras come out, you yes, had to put them yes. up on your shoulder and carry them around. As yeah. A, all you used to have was one of those. If you had one of those, you could do anything. You could go up to somebody right. and say, you're interviewing them for the news. I would do this yeah. and I'd be like 12 years old and they would not think anything about it. I'd say, I'm here to interview you for the school newspaper. What are you doing here today? You know, they would stop and really start spilling their beans, you know, and I would just, I would fuck with them, you know, so hard. And, but Man, those videos, I, those videos are pretty good too. Yeah. If, that's all, that's all you need. Yeah. If you act, if you act serious and you carry around a camcorder back yeah. then, and if, if you have a, a clipboard, if you have a clipboard, it's over. You can get anywhere you want to. You can be like, I've right. lost my, my backstage pass. I've got my, I've got notes here from the, you know, from the artist. I just need to get back here for just five minutes. You know, all right, oh, go yeah. ahead. You know, he wouldn't have that clipboard here if he wasn't, wasn't for sure. Right. Yeah, he's official. He has a clipboard, if, yeah. especially if you had a lanyard in a clipboard. That, that, that oh, would get yeah. you anywhere. You yeah. know, back in the back in the eighties, that camcorder got you in anywhere because they thought they was gonna be on TV. Yeah, yeah. Do you still have those um, uh, videos somewhere? Oh yeah, I, I know my dad's got them stashed away somewhere. He put them up somewhere. I'm sure I'm wow. them somewhere. Can you imagine a, a, a YouTube channel with that, uh, uh, with that kind of stuff on it? To, uh, <laughs> Roland said, "Tell them they dropped their hairline." <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> I dropped your hairline. Yeah, Belize, a file folder is good too. Makes you look official. It always does. You know. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh, Moses, you are a rascal. I'm telling y'all what, it, he's got notebooks of this shit, y'all. Let's see, what does Sarah Smith say? My mom and dad were volunteer firefighters. They had a Chevy Blazer with strobe pack and siren, and I may have busted in on a few bonfires and party. One dude clotheslined himself running away. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, that yeah. Been hilarious. Yeah, oh people they God. scatter. They hear that. They hear that noise, man. They scatter. They yeah. hear that. They sure do. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh, it's awful. <laughs> Clotheslined himself. Can you imagine? <coughs> yeah. We've got. I mean, imagine if he, Imagine if I did that at Durkey's house. If I pulled up with my lights and emergency lights flashing at the nighttime with the with the siren going, hollering, "Durkey Castle, come out of the trailer." You know, it'd be over. You see, chick. You see. He'd come out there and he'd tell you, no, 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 my my CI number is this. You can't lock me up. You can't lock me up. Here, here's you see my hand. Appeals, the appeals be flying out the window. Appeals and yeah. weeds be flying out the back window. <laughs> yes. You see Bo's crack You're pipe go flying out her window. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That'd be funny. Uh, Sarah Smith said another dude ran into a barbed wire fence. Oh, my God. Uh, oh, yeah. Roland says, tell your kids to go to the store and buy you a can of air. <laughs> I'll tell you what, what, you can get kids to do just about. I We tease, I tell you, we tease the kids in my family so bad. So very bad. It's, it's, and it's awful because I sit here and think I've got this real warped, twisted, like dark sense of humor. And that's because my dad and uncles and everybody, uh, to tease the shit out of me as a kid. I bet you. I yeah. bet you're good at teasing kids, there, Moses. <laughs> that didn't uh, sound right. Well, <laughs> <You did it>. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me tell you. I, I can tell you something else. Let me let me let me go ahead and elaborate on that one. Uh, okay. You know, I was telling you about where I used to do the the acting and the comedy and stuff like that. And uh, when uh, I got out of high school, it was uh, they had a. Uh, what was it called? A children's uh, children's theater. It was like a traveling yeah. children's theater. So it was just a bunch of us from high school and a couple of people from the local college would uh, get together and put on little shows for different schools or organizations, you know, for the kids. 
And I would never be in the, I would never be part of what was going on on stage. But what I would do, I would be like the narrator person who was uh-huh. pretending to be part of the audience, out in the audience. And they would dress me up as an old woman. So I had on like a, a big dress with big boobs and uh, I carried yeah. around a pocketbook. And I, underneath the dress, I had like three or four more pocketbooks. So, and my, I had on like a wig and glasses. And they would never, I would go in like maybe 20 or 30 minutes before the show started with my chair and sit out yeah. in the middle of the kids. And I would sit out in the middle of the kids and, you know, I would talk to uh, some of the, the principals or the teachers or whoever it was in charge of these kids and find out, you know, who I could mess with as far as the, the teachers, you know, later on. So yeah, the show would start and I'd be like, oh, this is going to be good. You know, so I would kind of really start the show. And be like, Y'all got to watch these now. Oh, I love this one. You know, the three bears, you yeah. know, this is a, I like this story. And uh, they come out and they I would, you know, when I was quiet, the kids would be quiet, but they would know the show, you know, the end of the, in between scenes, you know, they'd do like next one, they would do say the little red riding hood. They would end and I'd be like, Oh no, that was a good story there. I liked that. Hey, Mr. Bear, Mr. Bear. And I'd be hollering at the people up on stage and they'd be like, don't, uh, don't communicate with them, you know? So the kids would start cracking up, you know? So I had the kids in the palm of my hand and I would, uh, I get mad in the middle, of, and of course it was all planned out. The people on stage knew, you know, that I would throw my pocketbook at them, and I would holler. I'd be like, "There's that damn bear! There he is!" You know, I would cuss. I'd be like, "There's the bear! You know, there he is!" And I'd throw my pocketbook at them, and the kids would go freaking nuts. You know, they'd think, "Oh, this this woman sitting out here in the audience with us is done flipping out on the on the actors and stuff." And uh, I would grab like the principal, and I'd, you know, act like I was trying to get another pocketbook from him, or. <laughs> yeah, different different things I would do to mess with the kids. You know, by the time it was over, yeah. I was trying to take the kids home with me, and they all loved me. You know, as part of it, and then they'd do yeah. the little introductions, and the the cast the, would come on stage and be like, you know, here's and there's one more person that was in the cast. Can you guess who it was? And they'd be like, her, 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 you know. And I ripped my wig off and showed them that I was a man, and they <laughs> they go, whoa, like what the fuck, you know? <laughs> <laughs> whoa. <laughs> <laughs> it was always fun to mess with me. You could do just about anything, you know, and like uh, if you wanted the kids to pay attention, I just have to pay attention to what was going on stage and they would, you know, and yeah. I would act like I'd, I would act like I'd fall yeah. asleep, you yeah. know, as it was over and they would try to wake me up, you know, while they was changing the stuff around on stage. And uh, I just, hell, I didn't ever have really a script that the people on stage knew that I would end it and introduce the next clip, you know, the next, the next show that they was doing, you know, but yeah. other than that, you know, I'd be like, I want to hear the one about the three pigs. Can y'all do that? Hey, can y'all do the three pigs? What are y'all doing up there? They'd be like, Shh, don't, don't, don't talk to the actors, you know. And they would start doing the three pigs. Yeah. But the, the kids, the kids loved, and they loved when I would throw one pocketbook and I'd have a backup pocketbook ready. I had a bunch of pocketbooks. So now that I think about it, Tim Mack would have been good for this. this exactly. Track. Yeah, he would have. <laughs> With the cross dressing and, and the pocketbooks. Buddy Ennis up here said that. uh uh, he thinks he try, was trying to pick you up that night. And now he says, yep, now I'm sure of it. That was me trying to pick you up that night. <laughs> <laughs> Moses is. I'm telling y'all what. He's hilarious. He has the best stories. You're right, old hag. He is. Awesome. All right, Rip Tim Mac. That's right. All right, Pete Tim Mac. Oh, goodness. I'm surprised. Listen, we have said his name enough. I thought he was kind of like Beetlejuice, where if we talked about him or said his name three times, he might yeah. show up. I'm still now waiting. He, yeah. Yeah. Now he he ain't like Durkey. He's normal. Well, kind of in the head, you know, it, you keep saying yeah. Durkey's name. He's just going to get further and further away. Like I said, you don't, yes. you can't catch a squirrel. You know, it may work for the gobbler shaking the bushes, but right. you got to lay yeah. in silence and wait for the squirrel to come out of his hole. You know, that's when you catch yeah. it. Yeah. But now Tim Mack, right. yeah, you should have, he should have come out and de- defended himself. Oh yeah, come, yeah. Tend to well, come out, probably, bring some of the some damn videos been, too. Yeah, he's probably been uh, <laughs> recording videos this whole time, and so high he forgot to hit the the play <laughs> button or something. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's hey, he was another one. That, he was a he was another one, wasn't he? He would follow us. He didn't. He nodded out on a couple oh, lives, gosh. didn't he? Yes, Boy, he may have been just, one of the first. Now to think about it. Yes. And the Durkel verse. Yeah. I see a lot of people saying Durky verse. It's Durkel verse now. There's Durkle an L verse. in there. Yeah. Durkel verse. Yeah. But yeah, yeah he it's was one of the first to nod out in the Durkel verse. Now that I think about it. Yeah. Yeah. It was it was a close. Yeah. It was a close. It was close between him and Durky 
on who yeah. nodded out first. Yeah. Uh, but it's definitely a, a wash on who won. Donald won as far as many times nodding out. Yeah. Yeah. Donald wins for quantity. Tim Mack won. I don't know. The quality of his were pretty good because he, uh, he man, he had a whole community fooled there for a minute. Well, I don't yeah. say, let me take that back. He didn't have a whole community fooled because there was a, quite a few people that called him out there at the very beginning. But you know what? What the sad, sad thing is, the first person who ever called him out for the nodding out was Durkey. Yeah. I don't know if you remember yeah. that, but. Yeah. Well, what happens is, uh, like I see over on the mob side, is once you get invested in a troll like that, and it turns out that uh, they may be the ones that need to be trolled, you done invested in it too far. You know, you done gone too far. Yeah. You done simp You done simped out, and you can't, you can't turn your back on them now. You done. You're alone for the yeah. fucking ride, you know, until they right. blaze out and flame away. And <laughs> there's, uh, there's still some out there like that. I'll just go and leave it yeah. at that. But there's, there's still some trolls out there that may end up being the troll and getting trolled themselves. That uh, Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Is, we'll like see. I say, it's it's one thing to be a shit talker, but to know when to do it is the real, the real That's skill. That's right. That's right. That's right. Uh, Tim Mack was balling until he came out with the first video. Oh, my God. <laughs> The, pur the purse video was the beginning of the downfall for Tim Mack. <laughs> I, I think I think the giveaways the giveaways was starting to be the downfall oh, too. Man, he yes. started giving away yes. the rings and the uh, the doorbell yes. was the doorbell or some shit, some camera, and then uh, and then the fire sticks. That was oh yeah, the fire yeah, we, sticks. We well, they started asking for people's information. Them. Oh yeah. yeah, he was going at everybody's yeah. name and phone number and address and all this stuff. I'm like, this yeah. this ain't going to yeah. end well. This ain't going right. Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> Red Solo Cup said they called him on the six. Yeah, uh, I, I I'm not gonna, you know, I ain't gonna lie. He got me for a stick, and I'll never forget. I was like, <laughs> well, this is cool as shit. So I get this fire stick, and it's loaded up with all these extra apps, these uh um non Amazon apps. Then where I can like, uh, it's got a tour, uh, player and it's got, I mean, a tour downloader and I can play all these free movies and stuff, man, <laughs> he got me for shit. And look, it comes, first of all, the fire stick came loaded with, it did have these extra apps, but they were the jankiest fucking apps. Like they were like <laughs> Russian, um, <laughs> or something. I don't know. Crazy apps. And they were hooked up to his account so that he could turn them off and on on your TV remotely from his house. So I'm sitting there for like two weeks trying to download one movie on, on this ta tour downloader he had on the fire stick. And all of a sudden I go in one day and it says uh, your account has been disabled by the owner. What the fuck? I paid an extra $20 to get all this shit. And he done disabled it on me as soon as the cash app went through, I guess. I don't know. But yeah, so he got that money. Crazy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was bad. It was bad. I wasn't the only but one, he, though. I can say he that. vanished on y'all, too, then, didn't he? He, he yes, disappeared, yeah. too, didn't he? As yeah. soon as that happened, yeah, he disappeared. Yeah, there's a couple people. He took the money and ran. He didn't even uh, send out the... Uh, yeah, he didn't uh, get nothing. The fire yeah, stick. yeah. Yeah, uh, they didn't get a purse, a fire stick, a, a hello, it. slam, bam, thank you, ma'am, nothing. That was it. No, he just took nothing. your money and ran. He took my yeah. all I got out of me was one of a couple of my videos. He got a couple of my first videos. Yeah, but uh, you know, he, at least he got me started in it. I guess. And, yeah, you know, he got a lot of Smart people started on the Durkaverse. Yes, yeah, he did. That is one good thing. It's you know, but the only good thing I can say about old Mac Attack is that he uh uh he got a whole lot of people start on the Durky verse stuff, a whole lot of people trolling it, I guess. Honestly, yeah. uh, Chevy was my, was my, uh, popped my. Yeah. Well, that, that's it. Well, Chevy's was like the, the honest, you know, he's giving the story telling you how he's fake and stuff. And you, you know, I listened to that and I'm like, well, okay. You know, he ripped off his neighbors, you know, but you go over here to Tim yeah. Mack and Tim Mack was adding in the fucking, you piece of shit, piss smelling tin can trailer, mud hole, <laughs> stomp motherfucker. You know, I'm like, yes. oh, this is getting interesting now. He done stepped yeah, up the game yeah. on this shit now. Yeah. And one of my favorite, one of my favorite Durkin lines of all time was when he would tell Tim, he'd say, 
I don't have to worry about you long soon because McDonald's is going to come out with a triple cheeseburger, and that'll be the end of you. You'll overdose. You'll overdose on triple cheeseburgers, you fat son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> That was pre. Oh, that was pre. God. That was pre skanker. That was pre skanker when Durkee didn't have much of a filter. <laughs> he, that's another thing. When there's a girl there, he's got a little bit of a filter on him. You don't. We want Sometimes. the non-filtered. Yeah. Remember though, whenever man, he was so cringe when Skanker <laughs> first got there. Wow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> God, he was so cringe. That's when we got all those real good videos though of yeah. of uh, presidents being uh, having bunkers in West Virginia yeah. and the uh, oh God. The first podcast. The first podcast when he used the new equipment. Here we go, guys. Is it sounding good? Are we looking good? Cool. And they stand up. They're not even plugged in. They're they're still on their phones as normal. They're just wearing headsets and have microphones set up that ain't plugged in whatsoever. Still the same as always. Just his his phone sitting in front of him. Yeah. Oh, and I'll I'll tell you the the podcast stuff, man. Yeah, because we were, we all started out before Skanka. Skanka came, started, I guess Durkee and her might have been talking, but she there was a good two, three months of Durkee content before Skanka. If you want to go back, oh, yeah. that was like Tim Mack and stuff. But we have yeah, some stuff the Tim, in the yeah. world, you all. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, I'm going to tell them a little bit about some of the stuff. We found, uh, I've actually found some archive stuff that I'd forgotten I had. And we're uh, putting together some stuff about some old Durkee stuff that some people probably did see, but a lot of people, you know, so we can reintroduce everybody to it, but we got some uh, exclusive pictures and everything we're putting oh, together. Yeah. So, yeah. I forgot about yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Durkee yeah. has those podcasts stored on a computer. Well, yeah, you can get them from, uh, he used to say he was on iTunes. <laughs> so <laughs> when I was looking for some of those songs, I was going back through, it was 2016 and 17, he started saying Spotify, iTunes, Apple iStore is where his new album is going to be at. And uh, he yeah. named the radio stations and the DJs that was going to be playing it. But, yeah. you know, the podcast, the podcast equipment is how Skanka got her way in the door. She yes, sent the podcast is. equipment first. She said, yes, I bought this did. for you. You know, you my man. You know, you my man, yeah. boy. Here's your podcast equipment, son. And then yes. she come up there and she turned into Miss Country Bumpkin, you know. Yeah. And uh, they they done their podcast, and now she's she's back down to the ghetto. Well, living, living in the ghetto. She's no longer with us, yeah. It's she's no longer with us. You yeah. know the the shopping spree with the food stamps. Yeah, that was epic. That was epic. Yeah, that was shopping. That was one of the. the that was one of the first two because they had to. She had to, a bunch of food stamps had rolled over on her card. She had yeah. you know she hadn't spent on her kids because she done dished the kids the month before, and then she come yeah. to moon. And she got another month's worth, so she had about six hundred dollars worth on that card that they had to go and spend, or they didn't have to, but they did. They went and spent it as much of it as they could. You know, it yeah. was the first time that he had ever seen the Slim Jims and the Cocoa Puffs in the same yes. aisle. Yeah, yeah, he thought that was incredible. Yeah, Mama yeah. Rocks. Somebody once told me Skanka wanted to blow Dorky. <laughs> that was yeah. the. That's when we first met Skanka. Oh yeah. God! That might have been her that first so words crazy. on. That was her first words on camera, I guess. Yes, yeah, it was. That was before she got there. Yeah. Oh, well, y'all. Look, I guess we'll go ahead and wrap it up. We've been on here an hour and a half, and a coffee yeah. creamer ain't that right? The coffee creamer. They even did a TikTok <laughs> video showing. It, it, God, Durkee's so cringy because he did a TikTok video showing how to make this. Him and Skanka <laughs> did, and showing them how to make this like frappuccino thing but they have like the tiktok music playing so loud but it's not loud enough that you can't hear them talking so it's like it's the worst and i've seen plenty of really bad tiktoks this is the worst tiktok ever i'll have to i'm gonna post it on my page i'll have to find it post on my page it was oh uh, it was so awful <laughs> yeah. Inger, and that was, that's right yeah. moses inger yeah, in- anger was her name but name. she uh that was when Durkee, he said in that, in that making the coffee, he said, don't tell me I'm not improving my life. Look at this. I'm improving my life. Durkee's moving on up, people. Durkee is improving his life with a coffee maker. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's how he was moving a up. Coffee maker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. All right. Well, I guess we're going to, we're going to close this up for the night. Moses, did you, uh, 
have anything else we want to tell. This has been a blast. I've had a lot of fun. I hope everybody's laughed as much as me. It's great. And um, are we, we're going to go live Saturday night, Moses, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we'll be there Saturday night. Yeah. We'll Saturday have some stuff night. lined up. Yep. Uh, yeah. Between 9 At and 9 30, we'll, we'll make a post. Yep. Yeah. And uh, we might uh, we might have a special guest this week. We might not. Oh, wow. Is he new Maddie? Maddie AR, is that her name? Or AR Maddie or some, AK Maddie or something? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Maddie was one of the. Pretty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she yeah. was real pretty. Wow, you've been around a long time. Oh, Izzy was in one of the videos, the old videos I posted the other night. Uh, mm. So, yeah, yeah, you have been around a while. Uh, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up for the night. I do want to shout out um, Brad H. Brad H. got us a uh, our first uh, cash app on our new Rick and Moses show cash app. Thank you, Brad H. All right. Yeah. I appreciate that, Brad H. Yes, and the super stickers we got earlier, too. Yes. Those yep. Cool from uh, uh, Canterbury Tales. Yep. We mm -hmm. appreciate you. And uh, yeah, I guess that's it. We will, uh, everybody, drop your links one more time. If y'all are in here and y'all have got a channel and you got a wrench, go ahead and drop your all's links. Yep. And if um, if there's nothing else, I guess we will be making posts on our community page, letting y'all know about Saturday night, what's going on. Um, you got anything else for him, Moses? I believe that's it. We're going to give a little shout out to all the people who's been with us each time and uh, next yep. on the Saturday. So be looking forward to that. And yep. other yep. than that, like I said, just lay in wait and the squirrel right. will come, says Mr. Miyagi. Yes. yes, that's right. That's right. Let Don't the squirrel scary. come to you. Yeah. Yeah. Let the it squirrel will appear. come to you. <laughs> all right everybody y'all have a good night uh go watch uh, uh i think sasquatch is going live so go on and watch him y'all have a we will make a facebook group buddy that's a good idea we'll, we'll try and get that together y'all all have a great night uh be peaceful be safe and have a good one we'll talk to y'all later later y'all